Good morning, folks. Howdy. You guys requested it, so here I am with a full day of eating. And honestly, it's gonna be pretty simple because I don't really have many meals per day, but I always make sure to start off the day with my signature ultimate protein shake. Here we go. This is my tower of supplements in powdered form. Buy everything in bulk. This is the way to go. I put everything in this handy dandy Nutribullet because I want to make sure all the nutrients are homogeneously distributed. Is that the way to put it? I just put a lot of crap in there, so I make sure I blend it. All right, so first ingredient I put in is psyllium husk fiber. I believe about a tablespoon of it. And this is pretty much all just fiber. Now, I do this mostly because you know, I want to get my fiber in. I don't really eat that many green vegetables depending on the day. Next thing I usually put is protein. Uh, you don't have to use hydro whey, but uh, if anything, I probably would put a slower digesting type of protein in here if I had it, just don't have it. Something like casein. So I put two scoops. That would come out to about 60 grams of protein. I know that's a lot, but as I said, protein is super important. Then I usually put my creatine HCL. A couple scoops of this. Yeah, creatine pretty much backed by science. Most common supplement everyone who's lifting should take. Then I actually put some vitamin C. Super dose that throughout the day for antioxidants. Helps with skin as well. Now this one I'm experimenting, HMB, but honestly the science isn't looking too good. But I bought like a kilo of it, so I'm like, might as well use it even if it has minimal impact. I also put collagen. Uh, not sure if it's working, but you know, I have some disc problems in my back. Sometimes my elbow hurts. Collagen is supposed to help out with, you know, connective tissue. Also, good for the skin, added benefit. Of course I got Magnesium glycinate. Start off the day. I think this is about a 1 8 teaspoon. Never neglect your electrolytes. I also put potassium citrate. Uh, this is what a half teaspoon. Yeah. You could be pretty liberal with that. Almost nobody gets enough potassium per day. Then I got bulk curcumin from bulk supplements. Uh, not just turmeric, but the curcumin itself. You gotta be super careful with this crap. Like anything it touches, it turns like orange forever, including your skin. Uh, I've dropped it on the countertop. My wife definitely wanted to kill me. Well, she wants to kill me for many things. So I'm careful with this. This is a half teaspoon of straight up pure, almost, I think 95% curcumin extract. Half teaspoon there. Treat it like it's plutonium. Why do I do this? It's uh, a lot of science behind it too. Great for anti-inflammatory, good for pain because you know, I have some back problems. It seems to be good for working out as well. Uh, I'll go into the science on that in another video. All right, then citrulline malate. Pretty hard to overdo this stuff. It's just great for getting a good pump, but you know, it's my breakfast shake, so it's good for reducing soreness, a little bit faster healing. Stickers falling off, but I got bulk theanine. I think Powder City went out of business a couple years ago, but I'm sure there are other places. Theanine is actually good for kind of like balancing out the jitteriness of caffeine. Also, it does seem to have some uh, lifting benefits, but right now I'm doing it mostly because I'm going to balance out the caffeine I take before work. Beta alanine, uh, a lot of people don't know, you don't have to time this right before a workout unless you like that tingly feeling, which I do like, but I put a quarter teaspoon into my morning drink. Uh, beta alanine is great for endurance. It does have other benefits as well, not just in the gym. This one I forgot to put a label on, but I believe it's called NAC or N-acetylcysteine, whatever the hell that is, but there's science behind it too, mostly for just antioxidant. I put mm, about a quarter teaspoon. It's a really strong antioxidant, so I'm doing mostly for health. Uh, it also helps reduce stress, according to some studies, and again, good for the skin, supposedly uh, good for people with acne. Then I got 
Alcar or A L carnitine, I think. I forgot what the A stands for. Uh, again, this is not really just for working out gains. This is a uh, kind of a nootropic. I gotta get ready for work. My job does entail kind of like quick thinking and focus. So it's mostly for focus. I love it in my pre-workout too because it just makes me razor sharp thinking about my lifts. This, no label on it right now, but I think it's the fat soluble version of vitamin C. I love to experiment. This is just my latest one, see how it works out because I believe the fat soluble one stays in your body for longer. Again, antioxidant, pretty good for the skin as well. Oh, of course, never forget salt. This is not the actual correct label. I just put sea salt in here, but I generally put about less than a teaspoon like that. I don't know if you can see that. It's not rounded. Just put it in there in the morning. Everyone can use that extra salt. Ah, yeah. This one I refrigerate supposedly because it might go bad. It's spirulina, bulk as well. Got it on Amazon. Got to be careful with this crap as well. So that orange powder before stains everything. This is now a green powder that tends to stain everything. So I put about a tablespoon of this. Not a vegetable, it's like a one-celled organism of some sort, but yeah, some good science behind it as well. Uh, in terms of helping out the joints, it actually has a good source of protein and vitamins too. And finally, to get my energy levels up, I got some C8 MCT oil, the uh, best version or the eight chain version of MCT oil. Kind of do it bartending style, about a shot. I'm aiming for about a tablespoon. I think that ends up being around 100 calories or so. MCT is great because you know your body doesn't really store it readily as fat. It's just for like an energy boost, great in a pre-workout as well, and for real life work if you want to stay alive. So I close that up, put it on the blender. So you can see it looks like crap right now. Gotta be careful because this stuff stains everything. As you guys can see, it's a pretty hearty shake. You know, I put that fiber in there to help with digestion, but also it just gives you this feeling of being full. Because you know, although I'm not technically doing intermittent fasting because I do have this morning shake uh, and a meal, single meal probably much later at night, it keeps me full until then. I really don't feel hungry for at least five to eight hours after taking this shake. It's convenient, nutrient packed, got that spirulina, got some nootropic benefits to keep me alive during work and focused. It's got a lot of protein to get that muscle protein synthesis going if possible. And before I forget, I usually do take a multivitamin with this shake, a couple pills of fish oil. Now this one's an experimentation thing, it's CLA, but science is not uh, not looking too promising on that actually, but it is an antioxidant at least and can't go wrong with that uh, It is a fat and keto. Well, if anything, I might use it for energy then so Why not? We'll see supposedly it helps you preserve muscle mass when you're cutting So that's why I'm trying it out But oh science is actually on that. So it might be BS Cheers Yes, and this is not just for the video. I do one shot everything. It actually tastes okay though. I'll just, you know, sometimes I'm late. I gotta do this quickly. And I can't waste that residue. Put a little extra water in it, swirl it around. Gotta be Asian, not waste. There you go. That's my breakfast. Uh, how many calories did I just ingest? Well, protein itself around 70 grams of protein including the collagen uh, then we got the MCT oil and the spirulina so you can assume this shake is about 500 calories good way to start off the day uh, I'm cutting right now I'm only aiming for about maybe 2,000 to 2,200 calories so yeah quarter of my calories pretty much done already all right guys I am off to work feeling very satiated right now with that big shake it's gonna hold me down for a few hours. Uh, my next meal, I wouldn't call it a meal, would actually be my pre-workout. 
I'm cutting right now, that's why I'm gonna make sure I limit my meals, probably just have one big dinner, I'll show you later. Uh, of course, I should count my morning shake, my pre-workout, post-workout as part of my macros, so that'll add up. I'm feeling razor sharp. It's still cold out here in Korea. I ride a motorcycle or a scooter to work. So, see you guys later. Chest bump transition. Oh, time to work out. Workout brownie? You ready? Or you just want those snacks? Hi brownie. Hi Gobi. Hi Ariel. Back home from work. Uh, work was pretty short today. That was about five hours ago that you last saw me. Our next drink slash meal is going to be my pre-workout. That is probably gonna be very similar to what I just showed you. So, as you guys are curious of my full day of eating, here it goes. And back to my tower of supplements one more time. All right, so we're back here again with my Nutribullet filled with some water. Again, I put that tablespoon of psyllium husk fiber. Keeps me full, helps with digestion, if you know what I mean, in the bathroom. Protein one more time. Now this time, this isn't appropriate. It is appropriate time to have Hydro Whey because this is pretty much the fastest digesting whey protein out there. But I don't go all out. I put usually, it depends on my macros for the day, but again, I never really care if I have too much protein because if anything, it seems to help me. So I usually put about a scoop or a little bit less. So maybe 25 to 30 grams of fast digesting protein into my pre-workout. Uh, for two reasons. One, you know, because by the time I'm about to work out, I'm kind of getting hungry because it's been a few hours. I want to satisfy that hunger, but not be too full when I work out. And the second reason is more logical. It's muscle protein synthesis. Now, during the workout itself, you know, your insulin levels rise, you start to synthesize protein or muscle even at that time. And of course, considering my last meal was several hours ago, probably don't have as much protein flowing. So I'll put that in there to get that healing started ASAP. Uh, I really do feel like it actually helped me. And it really, I digest it super fast based on this protein, so no problems there. Uh, I wanna get five grams of creatine in every day, so I put a couple more scoops of that. Get my vitamin C mega doses one more time. Not going overboard with it, just a tiny bit. Definitely not that whole half teaspoon, just a smidge. I do actually create a separate intro workout drink at this time. I got my magnesium glycinate again. I put actually the bigger dose into my intro workout because I sweat so much. Put about like half of that. So technically, what would that be? Like a one eighth teaspoon divided by two, one sixteenth. Potassium again, potassium citrate. I put quarter actually half teaspoon into my intra, half into my pre. This is just, uh, you know, the caffeine and the uh, good chunk of the pre-workout itself is Legion Pulse. Blue Raspberry is my favorite, but I don't, for some reason I can't find it anymore. Hopefully they made it again. A couple scoops of that. I believe this uses erythritol, so that's good for keto. I don't think it really uses normal sugar. Yeah, salt. I sweat a lot, so you gotta adjust according to you. I put a teaspoon, a little bit less, into my pre-workout. And I also put a teaspoon, a little bit less, into my intra-workout. But if you don't sweat that much, you can probably put a little bit less. And if you had a lot of salty food throughout the day, probably. But as you guys saw that morning shake was the only thing I drank, so that was my only source of salt today so far, and I'm definitely not over uh, overboard. Citrulline mallet, actually Legion Pulse has plenty of citrulline mallet, but again, the clinical dose is what, eight grams? I tend to go overboard. I put 
another half teaspoon in my intra workout, another full, actually it's half tablespoon, another full tablespoon into my pre. I mean, this stuff is pretty cheap in bulk, and I have seen studies saying that you can't really overdose this stuff, it has no bad effects, so why not? Reduce my soreness, kind of like the taste of it too, nice and tangy. My NAC, told you before, good stress reducer, antioxidant, Alcar again. Really want to get that nootropic effect, that focus. There's some studies implying it helps burn fat and uh, give you some more energy. I can't verify that, but I do feel more energetic, at least mentally, so why not? Beta alanine, I took a little in the morning. I put a little bit more into my pre-workout. I like that tingly feeling. It does help with really, really big AMRAP sets or stamina, but honestly, studies show it's more for like CrossFit types, not really power lifters. But even if it gives me that tiny little benefit, why not? And theanine again, to give me that smooth caffeine energy. You know, caffeine's already in the pre-workout, so balancing it out. I believe Legion Pulse already has theanine in it, but I have so much bulk, let's put a smidge more. So, the intro workout itself, I already put magnesium, potassium, a little bit of citrulline malate, and salt, but this will taste like garbage right now if I just drink it like that, so I usually use this for BCAs, but science is beginning to show that BCAs really don't do crap if you take protein or sufficient protein, and considering I put protein already into my pre-workout, the BCAs <clears throat> themselves are probably useless, but honestly, I do for the flavor. So I like this lemon lime or whatever. Just put a single scoop of that. That's literally just for the flavor, so it doesn't taste like I'm just drinking dirt. Thing. Ah, of course. Secret ingredient that I think a lot of people you know, don't take advantage of enough, curcumin. There's like hundreds of studies, I'm probably exaggerating, showing the benefits, and they're like all across the board. Helps with pain, inflammation, blood flow, anti-cancer. Uh, pretty strong studies as well, and I think most of them are relatively unbiased, so highly recommended. I didn't say before, you have to pair this with Bioparin. Uh, this is the brand I take, it's like dirt cheap. I think you get like three of these. So three times 120 tablets for like 15 bucks or something. It's essentially black pepper extract or extract. And I usually just pop one of these before I take the pre-workout. I already did that off camera. Uh, if you don't take this, you can't really absorb curcumin. Uh, I forgot how the mechanism works, but essentially the body just wants to flush it out and piss it out or poop it out. But if you take it with bioparin, you absorb it more. Uh, supposedly like 2,000% more, something like that. All right, so I put this in my pre-workout, which gives it that super orange color. Remember, I gotta be careful. All right, this is a half a teaspoon. I usually put another of that, that makes a full teaspoon. This is also something that you can't really overdose on. And I've looked it up, I'm not just saying it from personal experience. I put more in this because I really want the benefits of better blood flow, the anti-inflammation, because I do sometimes have joint problems and back problems. And I really feel it. Like after I take this, my back problems go away throughout my workout. I'm feeling great. I feel lubricated in my joints. And obviously it's just technically masking pain because it's uh, kind of like a ultimate Advil Tylenol. But studies have shown so many other benefits that I really like to use it. Uh, some people might say is anti-inflammatory stuff okay for building muscle? Uh, there are some studies showing that things like Advil Tylenol or something like that might be bad for muscle protein synthesis and the inflammatory response for building muscle. But I haven't seen any studies like that for curcumin yet, but honestly, I don't think they've tested it. Uh, but from personal experience, I'm just one guy, I haven't seen it affect my muscle growth. I'm still growing when I lift heavy. Uh, and I feel like the benefits definitely outweigh the disadvantages for me. This stuff helps me. Highly recommend it, but oh, it's kind of pricey. Whole kilo of it, I think, is like 150 bucks or something like that. But it lasts like a year. So do the math there. Uh, definitely worth the investment. And buying it in pill form is definitely less uh, economical. So recommend it. Just be super careful. If you drop this on the floor, 
Yeah, you just need to buy a new house. Of course, MCT oil. Uh, this is optional uh, because technically MCT oil, you know, although you might not store it as fat, it just means you're not burning the pre-existing fat in your body when you're using these for energy. But honestly, uh, you know, I'm a power builder. I want to focus on you know, not just getting skinny, building muscle, uh, aesthetics. So I want to have a great workout, get some energy. So I put about a tablespoon of this. And that's supposed to be about 100 grams. Sorry, 100 grams. 100 calories. Um, be careful with this stuff. If you just douse it, uh, your stomach might not handle it well. So ease into it. You know, put like a half teaspoon, full teaspoon, and then work up to a tablespoon. Uh, same for coconut oil. Uh, I had a lot of problems with that, just downing it at first, stomach problems, but now I'm good. So I think that's it. Just put that in the blender. I'm going to chug it. I uh, actually also do take fish oil, CLA, although it's probably useless with this. Here we go. Why not? Cheers. Oh, I don't know. Whew, it's actually not that bad. As you can see, I'm very good at chugging things. Uh, that came handy in college, and now it comes handy right now. All right, guys, so that's probably about to kick in in about 10 to 15 minutes. It's actually chest day again. Uh, I do do leg day, by the way. I just don't really show it because I'm working my squats back up and fixing my broken back. And I will show you a couple clips of that real quickly and probably come back to you with some dinner, my only big meal of the day. We had 500 calories in the morning with that breakfast shake. Right now I had what? Uh, I'm going to guesstimate that at around 250 calories. So I'm at 750 calories for the day. 90-ish grams of protein already. Not exciting. I'm not showing you avocados and steaks and whatnot quite yet. Uh, that's how I keep my protein so high. I have to rely on protein shakes. I'm being realistic here. I don't have time to make five meals for the day. If I did, I probably would take less protein. So if you're that type, go ahead. But if you're you know, on the run, you gotta work a job, you're busy, you wanna be realistic, you gotta supplement with shakes, uh, protein bars, whatever little snacks along the way just some boiled eggs do whatever it takes but this works for me and i feel great all right so third food intake of the day. Just finished my workout. I want to get my protein in as soon as possible. Uh, again, if you watch my other videos, that's not required. You should probably take protein within about two to four hours, but the sooner the better when your insulin levels are high because they get spiked from the intense workout itself. More likely to absorb this into the muscle quickly. And I generally put one to two scoops, two for today. I'm cutting, so I wanna keep my protein intake pretty high. Most of my calories, I wouldn't say most, but a good chunk of my calories will come from protein. Two scoops, 60 grams of protein. According to this, that would be about 280 calories. Also put my creatine. This is not the actual brand, but it's pretty good too. I just use bulk supplements, creatine HCL, two scoops of that, that'll be about my five grams of creatine for the day. If you sweat a lot, it's a good idea to even put uh, potassium and magnesium into your post-workout. I do sweat a lot, so half teaspoon potassium there, magnesium glycinate. Uh, I probably wouldn't put too much magnesium because the body doesn't tolerate too much. I put maybe like one, one sixteenth, so half and one eighth. Shake it up. Okay. 
so today's tally I had a breakfast shake about 500 calories then I had the pre-workout which came out to about 250 then I have this one which comes out to about 280 because nothing else in there really has calories BCAAs are minimal from the intro workout so I'm at about a thousand calories for the day and quick tip uh, although you don't have to be paranoid about it uh, you don't want to have a very high fat meal too soon after your workout because when your insulin levels are still spiked in the workout itself you know insulin helps carry that fat to storage more quickly you know protein that'd be a good thing because the protein gets carried to your muscles quickly but you don't want that fat to get stored quickly with that insulin so if you want to maximize your muscle gain minimize your fat gain or maximize your fat loss you probably want to chug some protein after the workout again it's okay if you wait a couple hours not the end of the world you know, they say three to four hours is pretty good but fat intake try to wait at least a couple hours when the insulin levels start going back down to base levels you know on a perfect scenario I'll probably try to wait two to three hours but that's not always possible sometimes I have to eat dinner right after because it might be too late but yeah you know, it's not the end of the world you're not going to gain that much more fat just because of that but you know for those of you who are really trying to maximize things remember that okay food time soon see you later boom all right finally my first real meal of the day but technically you can't call it intermittent fasting unless you really have it within a small window so it's like a i don't know like a pseudo variation of intermittent fasting because it is my only real meal of the day and my first so considering i've gotten already a thousand calories and most of that's from protein <laughs> Honestly, I got like already 150 grams of protein pretty much, which would be enough for most people already, but I'm aiming for 200 plus on a cut. If anything, I want a lot of my calories to be from protein to maintain that muscle. Uh, but what we got here is dinner, and honestly, I'm not picky. I don't care if I have 250 grams of protein or 200 grams of protein or 300, doesn't matter. Uh, I don't care if I have more fat in this meal or protein, but I do know that I have about a thousand to a thousand two hundred calories left for the day if I'm cutting, right? Uh, if I were bulking, I probably could even eat more. So if you take a look, my awesome wife, who is off camera by choice, made this delicious keto-friendly meal. Uh, we got here. That is cauliflower fried rice. Um, she used obviously cauliflower, which is pretty minimal in calories, uh, mostly dietary fiber. So even like well, cauliflower in here is probably like 50 to 70 calories worth. Uh, then we got some eggs, probably like two to three eggs uh, went into here. Uh, then we got some yeah, vegetables that have minimal calories, mostly fiber. Got some spam. Uh, yeah, spam obviously isn't the healthiest meat out there, but again, you don't have to be that picky. Uh, obviously, I could replace it with steak, chicken, whatever. Today it's spam. Uh, if you guys don't know, in Korea, spam is not considered as ghetto as it is in the States. And honestly, I kind of like it. So a couple slices of Spam, I believe some ham is mixed in there as well. And uh, then over here, kind of leftovers from last night, it's something called, in Korean, budejige, but I think that would loosely translate in English to like military stew. Uh, I'm not going to go into the history of that, but you know how US-Korea relations, military often go together, so it's kind of like a, a ghetto mashup of ghetto american food and korean stew it's kind of spicy honestly you can put any type of meat in there you want so we got some i believe sausages got some kimchi a little bit of spam some i don't know those are quail eggs i believe and if we add this all up 
And obviously, it's really hard to estimate macros because mix and match going on here. But, you know, I do think what I have here is probably going to be about a thousand ish calories based on, you know, what I know over the years. You know, a few eggs here and there. Uh, that'd be a couple hundred calories. Cauliflowers, 50. Spam, probably like 100 calories per slice practically here. You know, a hot dog is like 150 to 200. I think a couple hot dogs worth and spam in there, a couple eggs. So yeah, uh, when I'm cutting, honestly, I follow my gut. I'm gonna eat until I'm pretty full. Gonna make sure this is my only big meal of the day. And I like to have it after my workout, close to bedtime, cause then I'm not gonna be tempted later to eat anything and go over in my macros. Uh, honestly, uh, the food coma feeling, if anything, might be good at night, so I can get a good night's rest. And you know, the research does show that it doesn't really matter what time you eat. So even if I ate this and slept like instantaneously, and I just like plop my face into this plate and passed out until the morning. Uh, oh. My wife wants to eat, so I'll hurry this up. I'd probably still be okay. So, since she's rushing me, and she made this, and I want to eat and not die, and I value my life, that's all for today. So that's about 2,000 to 2,200 calories, and that's how I do keto in a single day on a cut. On a bulk, things would be different. This is the day after. Got a fresh cut, feeling good. Let's put it simply. So I got my 500 calorie morning shake, my 250 calorie pre-workout, my approximately 250 to 300 post-workout shake, and then I got that one last big meal, the only real normal food of the day, and that ranged from about 1,000 to 1,200 calories all at once. That adds up to approximate 2200 calorie total and if you watch my macro or calculating macros video check it out if you haven't uh, that does line up approximately with my uh, cutting macros with exercise if i took a rest day i'd probably eat about four to five hundred fewer calories so maybe i would have cut down on that last big meal and i probably would have maybe taken out that post-workout shake, so that's another minus 300 uh, calories. So if you're cutting like I am right now, big tip is supplement with that psyllium husk fiber. Uh, it's pretty much nothing contributing to net carbs. I don't even count that for carbs. It gives you this sensation of being full, uh, so you're satiated for longer throughout the day without having to eat much until that last final meal. Uh, other tips. Uh, Pre-workout, honestly, ruins appetite for me. So if anything, that's kind of good. And I do put that uh, single scoop of protein in there as well. So I do feel satiated through my whole workout. Honestly, I am not hungry during my workout whatsoever after taking that pre-workout. And even honestly, after the workout, because of that post-protein uh, or post-workout shake, I don't feel hungry until about two to three hours after anyway. And as I said before, that's pretty much the optimal time uh, to be ingesting a big meal with a good amount of fat anyway because I don't really want to store that fat. Hopefully want to burn it uh, as soon as possible. As you can see, I'm not like this super health food oriented guy. You can do easy keto as I call it. Just eat one huge meal a day. Don't go too crazy about macros with it. Uh, just make sure you eat about 1,000 to 1,500 calories in that single sitting feels great, you just feel full, you don't think about food. 150 to 200 grams of protein is my goal. I gotta hit that, I make sure no matter what, whether it's through protein shakes and or food. And then after that, it's like whatever, just eat until my calories fill up. So it's kind of like my keto version of if it fits your macros. You know, I don't care if I go beyond 200 uh, grams of protein, I don't care if I go too high in fat, as long as the calories are pretty low, but I did hit that protein level. Alright guys, so if you like this, you know, I'm going to probably have more full day of uh, eating. I'm going to probably do more of those, but as you can see, it's kind of boring. I only really have one dish anyway, uh, but since those meals do tend to be really filling, uh, I'll keep you filled in. So if you like this video, please like, please subscribe. 
comments down below if there's anything else you want to see. Uh, I'm going to be going on a trip to California, actually, first time in my life in the next few days. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm bringing my computer with me, but definitely bringing this camera. So, yeah, might be a little hiatus from vlogging, but I'll try my best. Maybe I'll just borrow something over there. Maybe I'll just do some live workouts or something like that, unedited. All right, stay tuned. Peace.